Good day, everyone. Welcome to episode three of our lecture series in 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. For today's episode, we will discuss the genres, elements, and structures of 21st century literature. They said the 21st century literature refers to a new literary work created within the last decade. It is written by contemporary authors which may deal with current themes or issues and reflects a technological culture. It often breaks traditional writing rules, it traces artistic representation of shared and familiar experiences. So that is one of the um, difference. If we will compare the 21st century literary genres to the traditional or to the old literary genres. So uh, 21st century literature reflects or uses technology sometimes when they are going to present the different literary themes or issues. Then they break the traditional rules in writing. In uh, 21st century literature, uh, they use or they have uh, new rules or uh, sometimes they do not follow any writing rules this way. They break the traditional writing rules and it traces artistic representation of shared and familiar experiences with the advent of science and technology, um, presentation of the different literary works are now um, using the artistic element of technology. Okay. So let's start with uh, the 21st century literary genres. So this, stuff, this is the focus of our study. We will discuss the genres. What is genre? When we say genre, it refers to a category of literary composition. Yes, category of literary composition. So it may be determined by literary technique, tone, content, or even length. So before the, the traditional literary genres are, we have the poetry, of course. Then um, we have drama or play. We have fiction and creative nonfiction. So before um, we have the so-called under poetry, we have the so-called narrative poetry. We have a uh, lyric poetry. Then under drama, we have before, we have the so-called uh, street play, uh, secular play, especially during the Spanish period or religious play. Now, under the uh, fiction, yeah, we have novel. What else? We have uh, short stories. Before, traditionally, we have fable, legend, what else? Epic, and um, we, under creative nonfiction, we have um, essay, biography, autobiography, and uh, sometimes the literary journalism. At present, how can we uh, differentiate 21st century literary genres to the traditional literary genres? Let's see, what are those literary genres under the 21st century period. Okay. First is the so-called illustrated novel. This is the first literary genre in the 21st century. Literature. What is illustrated novel? Illustrated novel is a story through text and illustrated images. Textual portions are presented in traditional form. So in illustrated novel, it is more on illustration or illustrated images than text. Sometimes some illustrate no, illustrated novels may contain no text at all. In this case, the reader must interpret the images to comprehend the story completely from the word illustrated or from the word illustration. So it is more on uh, illustrated images. Again, some illustrated novels may contain no text at all, purely illustration or illustrated images. What are the examples of illustrated novel? Okay, these are examples of illustrated novel. We have Draw the Line by Lauren Lynn, Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Okay, so that's the first one. We have 
the illustrated novel. Again, what is illustrated novel? This is a story or narrative through text and illustrated images. Sometimes more on illustrate, uh, illustrated images than text. Sometimes there are no text at all. If there are text, 50% are allotted to illustrated images and 50% are allotted to um, the, the text. And in order for the readers to understand the content or the, uh, the content of this uh, literary work, they need to, inter to interpret the images. Okay, so next is graphic novel. What is graphic novel? Graphic novel is a story in comic strip format and published as a book. This story is conveyed to the reader using a comic form. It contains complete narratives, whether or not they are part of a larger series. So when we say graphic novel, your clue is comics. So it is a story, it is narrative in comic strip format. It is in a comic form. So if you, um, if you uh, have read some comics or some, um, some stories in a comic strip format, that is what we call graphic novel. So it's different from illustrated novel. Because in graphic novel, uh, normally it is, uh, from the word novel, it's, it's very long, it is as you read. But, uh, and it is in a comic strip format. While in a illustrated, no illustrated novel, it is more on illustration than the text. While in graphic novel, there are uh, dialogues in a dialogue box, or there is an uh, illustration also, but in a comic form. It is presented in a comic form, then there is a dialogue, there is a text. Okay, so what are examples of graphic novel? Okay, examples of graphic novel. So, Doorkeeper by Ed Ethan Chua and Scott Lee Chua. Okay, the Mythology Class by Arnold R. and some other comics. If you have read comics, uh, examples, the uh, examples are the uh, literary works or um, the different uh, stories in comics written by um, Mars Ravelo, Carlo J. Caparas. So before, um, comics are very uh, familiar to the Filipinos, but now sometimes some other uh, graphic novels are uh, found in some uh, magazines or sometimes in some uh, newspapers, okay? So let's move on. Next is manga. Ah, you are familiar with this, especially the, uh, the youth like you. Manga, it is used in the English-speaking world as a generic term for all comic books and graphic novels originally published in Japan. It, it is considered as an artistic and storytelling style. Manga is the Japanese term for comic. So, manga is also in the form of comics, but the term we use is manga. Manga derives or originates from Japan. So, it is used in the English-speaking world as a generic term for all for all comic books and graphic novels. Okay, what are examples of manga? And I think you have uh, known so many examples of manga because you are familiar with this uh, literary genre. Okay, so example, you have Dragon Ball or you are familiar with Dragon Ball by Akira Toriyama. Then Naruto, you are familiar, familiar also with this by Masashi Ishimoto. Okay, so you can give more examples of manga because you are familiar. Some of you are, if not some, most of you, you are very fond of reading manga. Okay, next is text talk novel. What is text talk novel? Text talk novels include blogs, email, and IM format narratives. 
the stories are told almost entirely in dialogue simulating social network exchanges. So, if you are familiar with blanks, if you are using email and sending a uh, message to your loved ones, to your friends, and um, then you are uh, exchanging um, messages using your cell phone, through texting, or through Twitter, okay, that is what we call text talk novel. Okay, what are examples? Group, and for example, if you have blank, Kiss and Blank by Alison Noel, that is an example of text talk novel in the form of blank. Heart on My Sleeve by Ellen Wittlinger, that's an example of emails or instant messages. The text, for example, or sometimes through email, you can communicate with somebody through email. You can send messages or messages through email or through text or through tweet. Tweet or tweets, you can exchange your uh, ideas, you can exchange information with your friends and with your loved ones through tweet. So all of this, we call this a text talk novel. Okay. Now, next is digifiction. What is digifiction? Digifiction, it is a literary presentation that combines time, three media. Book, book, then video or movie, and internet websites. So, these are the three media that you will use, that you are required to use in order for you to watch or in order for you to um, Navigate digitation. To get the full story, the readers must engage in navigation, reading, and viewing in all three forms. So that is digitation. You need or you are required to have the three media. You are, you are required to navigate the three media, the book, video or movie, and internet websites. You need to navigate, you need to read, view all these three forms of media. Okay. What are examples of digifiction? Examples of digifiction is the Skeleton Creek by Patrick Corman, Level 26, Dark Origins by Anthony E. Zwickel. So there are some other uh, examples of digifiction, but uh, I give only two examples as part of this presentation. Okay, so you are very fun, especially the uh, those who are uh, very fond of science fiction, for example, or those who are very fond of uh, horror or fantasy. So uh, you can read, you can uh, find them in the so-called Digi fiction. But again and again, you need three, form of, uh, three forms of media in order for you to uh, navigate uh, Digi fiction. Again, the book, you must have video or movie and the internet website okay let's move on this time doodle fiction what is doodle fiction doodle fiction it is a literary presentation where the author incorporates doodle drawings and handwritten graphics in place of the traditional font drawing enhances the story often adding numerous elements like like uh, it's like a stick man okay so doodle drawings and handwritten graphics, you will use it in place of the traditional font. Let's see the example. Okay, look, look at the example. So um, a novel, a novel by Sherman Alexie, it's entitled The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. So look at the uh, doodle drawing of the man. Then doodle bag by Karen Romano Young. Then, the uh, school, Adventure at, at the Harvey and Trouble Elementary School by Kate Mark Newland. Okay, so again, the focus of Doodle Fiction only is, it incorporates Doodle drawings and handwritten graphics instead of the, the, the traditional font that we use in some other literary genres. Okay, next is speculative fiction. What is speculative fiction? It is a term encompassing 
the more fantastical fiction genres, specifically in science fiction, fantasy, horror, weird fiction, superhero fiction, dystopian fiction, apocalyptic fiction, and post-apocalyptic fiction. So if you are very fond of watching, or if you are very fond of reading um, fiction stories in science, uh, in fantasy, horror, weird fiction, uh, fiction story that talks about supernatural or superheroes, or about the uh, apocalypse, post-apocalypse um, related stories, they are under speculative fiction. So you are familiar also with this because uh, at present, most of the students, most of the youths are very fun of uh, reading or it's a movie, watching or viewing these uh, literary things or literary genres, science fiction, fantasy, horror, weird fiction, superhero fiction, dystopian fiction, and even apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic fiction. Let's give the examples. Okay, look at the examples. Oh, you are familiar with this. Star Wars, Death Star, right? by My Michael Reeves and Steve Curry. Before Mars, from the title itself, it's more on science, science fiction, by Emma Newman. Then, The House of Shattered Wings, by Aliet de Bodard. Okay. So from the title uh, from the title alone, uh, you will identify it as speculative fiction because from the title itself, more on science or more on fantasy, um, more on superheroes or sometimes apocalypse or uh, post-apocalyptic -apocalypse, uh, fiction. Okay. So what's the next? Okay, plus plus fiction. What is plus fiction? It is, it is a style of fictional literature characterized by being very short, typically consisting of, of only a few hundred words and with extreme brevity. There is no widely accepted definition of the length and category. Sometimes it's composed only of four lines, sometimes more than four lines, sometimes having a hundred words, or sometimes uh, a thousand words, so that is plus fiction. Okay, let's give a, an example. Look, these are examples of plus fiction. Normally, you will uh, read it or you will uh, see it in some blogs or in some uh, platforms in uh, social media. This is the best six word one, plus fiction. Look, let's read the first one. That slept in. Love has risen. In her songbird, cleverly disguised as harpy. Earth Mother, I weep for you. For end, for you, me, I, obstructed you. Loving of limbs one by one. You say parody, I say parody. Okay, that is plus fiction. Okay. Next is creative nonfiction. It is also known as literary nonfiction. That's the other term for creative nonfiction. It is broad enough to include travel writing and nature writing, science writing, sports writing, biography, autobiography, memoir, the interview, and personal essay. So if your writings tackle about travel and about nature, about science, it's different from science fiction this time, science nonfiction. Huh? So about sports, about, about the story of the life of a well-known person, this is called as biography, or about the story of your own life, you will write uh, the story of your own life, that is autobiography. The memoir, what's memoir? Memoir, it talks about um, the memories, or the memory, the memories of somebody with his past experiences, the interview, and personal essay. All of these are creative nonfiction. So when we say creative nonfiction or nonfiction, this is the opposite of fiction. Okay, so those um, those articles in the newspaper that talks about uh, sports, 
or the um, feature writing and yeah. feature writing or article that features about sports uh, about science uh, what what is the, the latest about science for example if you will discuss an article about COVID-19 or about nature about travel all of these are creative non-fiction okay these are examples of creative non-fiction the empathy the empathy exams is a this an essay or a, maybe a collection of essays by leslie james remember familiar or personal essay is an example of creative non-fiction okay another example is the american prometheus the triumph and tragedy tragedy of j robert Oppenheimer. so this is a biography written by Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin. So, essay and uh, biography. Okay, next is Chick Literature. Okay, it sounds new to all of us. This is a genre of fiction which addresses issues of modern womanhood, open humorously and light heartedly. Sometimes, Chick Literature. They call it as chiclet. So chiclet typically features the heroine's or main character's relationship with her family or friends. Okay. So examples of chiclet ritual. Look at the um, look at the what do you call this? The title alone about a girl. So it talks about a woman about a girl by Lindsay Cook. Then Claire Cook. So Claire is the name of a woman. Or no, Claire Cook is author. Time place is a title. Look, uh, from the um, graphics, you, know, you will see what you will see is a woman. Because again, chick literature, chick literature is a genre of fiction with ad which addresses issues of modern women. So this uh, genre of literature uh, is for women. Okay, next is the spoken po poetry. So you are very, very familiar with spoken poetry because in school, in a coffee shop, in bar, in the street, or anywhere, in any places. Uh, sometimes some other uh, people, they uh, show their talent in spoken poetry. Okay, spoken poetry. It is a type of poem performed or read in artistic and emotive manner, which can be presented in any places, as like what I said. It is an oral art that focuses on the aesthetics of word play, such as intonation and voice inflection. Okay, so it is a uh, it is also a uh, poetry. It is a uh, but a modern poetry or a modern poem. So aesthetics of word places as an intonation or voice inflection that's correct but uh, the beauty of spoken poetry uh, sometimes some other um, people who recite spoken poetry it is on the spot they can recite it on the spot uh, that that was anything but sometimes there are some people that they do read it they present it by reading but the uh, common thing is uh, spoken poetry uh, focuses more on the aesthetics of wordplay, but as um, blending it with different intonation or voice inflection. Okay, so look at the examples. Look, student life is the title of this spoken poetry. Ang pinakamahirap at napakamahimpluensyan tanong. Hoy, papasok ka? Ang mabanuksong sagot, ikaw ba? Ang napaka-pressure na sagot. Ewan ko nga eh. The best na sagot. Pag di ka pumasok, di na rin ako papasok. With the twist results to, para kung tayo pumasok, at mapakonsinteng pangyayari. Buti na lang, hindi na tayo pumasok. Wala naman daw palang ginawa eh. Look. So, if you will analyze this spoken poetry, uh, it's entertaining. 
it is entertaining the way the uh, the way it is written because it touches uh, it touches the uh, real life experience or experiences of the students maybe in in the classroom, di ba? Try to read. Hoy papasok ka. Ikaw ba? Ewan ko nga eh. Pag di ka pumasok, di na rin ako papasok. Tara, hindi tayo pumasok. Buti na lang. Hindi na tayo pumasok. Wala, na, wala naman daw palang ginawa eh. Look. So from the conversation, a normal conversation of the students uh, in the school or inside the classroom, they write it in the form of poetry and we call it spoken poetry. It is called spoken poetry because normally it is on the spot and uh, for uh, the one who recites it, it is on the spot what comes into his or her mind. So he, uh, he or she will recite it instantly. Okay, let's see the other one. The title is Panatang Kaibigan. Panatang Kaibigan. Iniibig ko ang aking mga kaibigan na tumatanggap sa aking mga kahibangan. Ako'y kanilang tinukubkop at tinutulungan upang maging malakas, maligaya kahit walang pakinabang. Bilang ganti, ibibigay ko ang aking tiwala. Ililibre kapag ako'y umaman at susundiin kapag ako'y nagkakotsin. Isipain ko ang sinimang umaway sa kanila, sa ulo, sa hita, at sa mukha. Okay, so... Uh, it is patterned with our, uh, what do you call this, Pledge of Allegiance. Panatang Makabayan. Pledge of Allegiance to our country. Diba yung Panatang Makabayan? Ito, they turn it as Panatang Kaibigan. So, somehow it is humorous, diba? Somehow uh, it is entertaining the way the, way the uh, words are being played. Uh, they change some words, but with the... Uh, with the uh, voice inflection or with the structure also of the real Panatang Makabayan or our pledge to uh, pledge of allegiance to our country. So that is uh, spoken poetry. These are examples of spoken poetry. Maybe some of you, you are very good in spoken poetry. Okay, let's move on. We have the mobile phone text to learn. Ah, can you see mobile, mobile phone text to learn? Uh, is a short poetry in the form of Tanaga. Tanaga is a form of poetry before and is originated in Japan. So a short poetry, this is a short poetry in the form of Tanaga sent by SMS to your parents, relatives, colleagues, and network people on a cell phone. That's why mobile phone. It consists of four lines is of which consists of seven syllables. That is the uh, feature of the uh, Tanagan. Let's see the example. Okay, look. Examples of mobile phone text tula. Why they, is, why they call it as text tula? Tula through text. That is the word text tula. So a phone that is being sent by SMS or via SMS through our cell phone or through our Mobile, mobile phone. Look at the example. Oh, uh, there is an email phone. This is um, from the uh, text through text message. So the the poem is: If missing you is a crime, I'm guilty. I'm not fine. I miss how we used to be. Please, oh please, come back to me. Look. So it is a poem, a short poem being sent via SMS through mobile phone or cell phone. Look, if, mean, sing. How many syllables? One, miss, sing, two, three, you, four, is, five, a, six, crime, seven. Look, there are seven syllables for one first line. If missing you is a crime, this time, this, this is, I am second syllable guilty. Then I am not. Ah, wait. This is I'm. I'm means uh, contraction of I am. So one syllable. When we say I am, two syllables. But when we say uh, I'm, one syllable. So I'm guilty. 
I am not fine. Okay, there are seven syllables for the second line. Okay, for the third line. I miss how we used to be. Seven syllables for the third line. For the fourth line. Please, please, oh, please come back to me. Look, so we said that uh, mobile mobile phone text to land. It is consists of four lines. Is of uh, is of which or each line consists of seven syllables. Look, how many lines? First line, if missing you is a crime. Second line, I am guilty. I am not fine. I miss how we used to be. Third line, please, oh please, come back to me. So that's four line. Four lines. Then in each line, in each line. In each line, first line, second line, third line, fourth line, there are seven syllables. Okay, this is an example in Tagalog. Ang tao ay nanganali. Mabubuhos lang ang luwa sa pagpatay na ginawa. Nina Marcos na binanggit sa halip sa pagtutuwa, sa halip ng paglulungkot. Mga ngalit lang sila sa nakayaring na dugo. Ang makayaring panahon na dinadala ng tao, na dinadala ng edge, or ang bunga ng mga ngalit. So this are, these are examples of textula. Again, textula, when it's called as textula, this is a poetry or poem be, uh, being sent via SMS on our mobile phone or cell phone. Okay? I think this is the last uh, literary genre, 21st literary genre, and we call this as hyper poetry. Okay, hyper poetry, it includes verse with links to sub poems or footnotes, poetry generators, or poetry with movement or images. It is usually highly engaged in the visual and sometimes involves parts that are read in varying orders. Okay, so sometimes they call it a cyber poetry. So, cyber or hyper poetry includes verse with links to sub poems or footnotes. Look at this example. Okay, the title of the poem is Medical Notes of an Illegal Doctor by Alexis Kirkwood. If you are going to click this link, okay, you will what? You are going to uh, find and uh, you are going to uh, read some poems under this link related to the uh, poem written by Alexis Kirkwood. So look, this is simple. This is a simple form, a footnote poem with one main or home poem branching to sub poem. So again, if you will, uh, if you will click this link, you will what? You will read some other poems or sub poems related to the poem written by Alexis Kirchner. So that is hyper poetry. Hyper poetry, it what? It uh, will bring you to the link uh, of the sub poems related to the poem that you are reading or related to the poem that you need. So that's why uh, it has poetry generators in order for you to generate some other well, some other sub poems related to the poem that you have or poetry with movement or images so these are examples of hyper poetry or sometimes we call it as cyber poetry okay so that's all guys that's all for, uh, for our episode three and i hope that you have learned more gain more knowledge with this discussion until uh, next episode on our episode four uh, that's all thank you bye bye